Alrighty, folks, you know I'm feeling great on a Tuesday morning because we're now 5-0 and with a push at our last six extra daily picks on my premium page. We had the over in the Michigan-St. John's game in men's college basketball. Got the job done. And the good news is I have another extra daily pick going off here today for just $2.99 for 30 days of service. And if you sign up for that extra daily pick here today, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to my daily best play every single day during that time frame, absolutely free. It's going to be included with your purchase. Now, I also want to give a big shout out to my chairman members for connecting on five different premium selections of mine yesterday. We had the Wizards plus 10, Xavier plus 17 and a half. We had the over in that St. John's game, Avalanche on the money line. And we also connected on a two-team eight-point teaser in the NBA. And the only way you could have accessed all of those winners is to join my full access, all-inclusive chairman package. Now, chairman members get access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. Now, you may be wondering what the difference is between what I do here with the free videos and what I do on my premium page. Well, what I do here with the free videos is I'll handicap the entire slate of games in any given sport, side in total. What I do on my premium page is, well, I share with you which one of these free plays I actually like the best. And once again, folks, I'm 5-0 and with a push on my last six extra daily picks. Four and one with a push in my last six NBA tier package plays. And finally, guys, I'm six and three in my last nine chairman package picks on my premium page. And the good news is I have plays going off in all of those memberships here today. It's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into some free content. We're going to start off with the Hawks at the Pistons. That'll be a seven o'clock Eastern tip off. Atlanta's the four-point favorite, totals 232. Now, uh, in my opinion, Atlanta should be able to get the job done away from home here. Uh, one of the better road scoring teams in the NBA at the moment. Trey Young's averaging 24 points a game and ranked second in the league in assists. Meanwhile, DeJounte Murray's second on the roster in points, and he's drilling nearly 42% of his three-pointers. Now, they're facing a terrible Detroit team who lost eight straight and they successfully covered only twice during that time frame. Now, the Pistons are having a tough time getting on the scoreboard at home. And in their last 10 gatherings with Atlanta, the Pistons took the loss seven times. So if you're into historical trends, certainly want to uh, take a look at that one there. Now, injury-wise, Morris and Duran are both out for the Pistons. Goye and Bufkin are still out for Atlanta. Now, the over did cash in five out of the Hawks' last eight ball games. Meanwhile, Detroit went six and two to the over in their last eight themselves. Give me the Hawks minus four over 232. Next contest, Pacers, Sixers, seven o'clock Eastern tip off. Philadelphia's minus five and a half, totals 241. And aside from losing just one ball game this year, the Sixers have also covered the point spread. In every single single uh, one of their contests, besides one as well, uh, they're scoring 121 points a night on average, and Joel Embiid second in the league in points per game. Now Tyrese Maxey's also second in the lineup in points per contest, and he's drilling 43% of his long balls. Now they're uh, facing a Pacers club who's been terrible on the defensive end of the court. Uh, they're giving up a, uh, a ton of points on the road this year, and they're actually one of the worst rebounding teams in the Eastern Conference. Now, injury-wise, Nicholas Batum is out for the Sixers, and when it comes to the total in this one, all three of Indy's road games this season got over the total. As a matter of fact, the Pacers saw every one of their contests this year get over the total except for one. Give me the Sixers, minus five and a half, over 241. Next ball game, Heat, Hornets, 7 o'clock Eastern start time. Miami's the three-point favorite, totals 223 and a half. 
Now, the Heat should take care of business here today. A pretty generous number for a team who's won five straight. Bam Adebayo leads the roster in scoring. Double-digit boards a game for the center. Meanwhile, Jimmy Butler scoring 18 tonight and drills 47% of his three balls. Now they're facing a Charlotte club who lost six out of their last eight. And they struggle on the defensive end of the court. The Hornets are allowing over 123 points a game. And they actually give up more fourth quarter points than any other roster in the league. Now more bad news for Charlotte fans. Uh, Gordon Hayward's questionable to suit up with a hammy. Keep an eye on him. We offer the Heat on the other side. Hero and Martin are uh, inactive for them. When it comes to the total, six out of Miami's last 10 meetings with Charlotte did get over the total. Uh, they averaged 117 points a game during that time frame. So once again, if you're into historical trends, plenty of overs to go around. Now the uh, Hornets saw their last seven straight this year all get over the total themselves. Give me the Heat minus three over 223 and a half. Next contest, Magic Nets, 7.30 p.m. East. Brooklyn's three and a half at home, totals 219. And despite being favored in this one, the Nets lost three out of their last five. And uh, they've had some bad defensive showings during that span. The Nets are letting their opponents make nearly 14 three-pointers against them a game. And weirdly enough, they actually play their worst defense in the second quarter. And, uh, well, they're in the bottom five in the East in second quarter points allowed. <coughs> and the reason why I mentioned that, uh, kind of a really odd trend here, the Magic is currently, uh, they are currently scoring more second quarter points a game than any other roster in the league. So um, that uh, second quarter could get interesting. Paolo Bancaro leads the lineup in scoring, and he averages just about seven rebounds a night. Meanwhile, Mo Wagner averages double-digit points a game himself. And he's making 65% of his attempts from the field. But the real strength of this franchise at the moment has been their defensive play. These guys are currently one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the game. And when it comes to the injury list, Fultz and Harris are out for Orlando. Simmons and Thomas out for Brooklyn. Now the Nets' last three straight all fell under the number, 5-2 and two to the under in their last seven. Meanwhile, Orlando this season saw all of their ball games stay under the total besides two. Give me the Magic plus three and a half, under 219. Next contest, Spurs, Thunder, 7.30 p.m. East. Oklahoma City's minus nine and a half, totals 237. And uh, despite the large number here, I do think OKC uh, does get the job done. Uh, San Antonio has been playing little to no defense this year, and uh, OKC's got no problems getting to the hoop. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander is dropping nearly 30 points a night and makes 52% of his field goals. Meanwhile, Chet Holmgren's third on the roster in scoring. He's making 50% of his shots from three land. Now they're facing a Spurs club who lost their last five straight. And they give up more points a game than any other roster in the association. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that uh, they have the worst defensive field goal percentage in the game. Now Jones, Johnson, and Sochan are all questionable for the Spurs. When it comes to the total in this one, San Antonio saw all of their ball games this season get over the total except for one. Meanwhile, OKC is 4-2 to the over in the Paycom Center. Give me Oklahoma City. Minus nine and a half, over 237. Next matchup, Mavs, Pels, eight o'clock Eastern tip-off. Dallas is minus three, totals 239 and a half. Now the Mavericks are eight and two on the year, and they're scoring over 124 points a night. Luka Doncic is first in the NBA in scoring, third in assists. Meanwhile, Kyrie Irving's knocking down 40% of his three-pointers. Now they're facing a Pels club who lost five straight, and uh, they failed to cover in all of those losses. Now, defensively, the Pels give up the majority of their points in the second half, but it ain't just defense that's the uh, problem in New Orleans. They've been pretty anemic offensively. The Pels are a bottom three point-producing team in the West. When it comes to the injury list, Nance and McCollum are still out. Jones is questionable. 
You go off for Dallas. They're mostly healthy for the exception of Maxi Kleba. Uh, he'll be on the sidelines for another week or so. Now, Dallas off four out of their last five road games get over the total. As far as the entire season goes, Dallas is currently 80% to the over in all of their ball games. Now, the Pels saw three out of their last five at the Smoothie King Center get over the total themselves. Give them the Mavs minus three over 239 and a half. Next contest, Blazers, Jazz, 9 o'clock East. Utah's the six-point favorite, totals 231. And despite their record, uh, Utah's having little problems offensively over the past handful of games. They're now in the top three in the league in offensive three-point percentage, uh, shooting it very well from long distance. And I'll tell you what, by the numbers, Utah's arguably the best rebounding team in the Western Conference right now. Laurie Markin and snagging uh, nearly double-digit rebounds a game, club leader in scoring. Meanwhile, John Collins is drilling just about 43% of his attempts from downtown. Now they're facing a Blazers team who gives up a bunch of points early in games. But uh, the real problem with the Blazers has been offensive production. Uh, Portland's averaging a league-low 106 points a night. Now, injury-wise, Henderson and Brogdon are out for Portland. Uh, Kessler, still on active for Utah. When it comes to the total, the Jazz did see all four of their contests in Salt Lake City get over the number. And they're also 80% to the over for the entire season. Now, four out of Portland's last six road games did get over the number themselves. Give me Utah minus six over 231. Next contest, Clippers, Nuggets, 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Denver's minus four and a half, totals 223. Now, I do like the Nuggets in this spot here at home. Uh, they're undefeated in six games at the Ball Arena, and uh, they are leading the NBA in field goal percentage. Isn't the Ball Arena still? I know they change names a lot. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm talking about Denver. Uh, Nikola Jokic, he is averaging over 29 and a half points a game. And he's grabbing nearly 14 rebounds. Meanwhile, Michael Porter Jr. is making 48% of his field goals. And he ranks second on the roster in points. Now, they're facing a struggling Clipper team who lost five straight. And they failed to cover in all of those losses. And out of the Clippers' last 10 gatherings with the Nuggets, they've had very little success. They're just 1-9 against the Nuggets during that time frame. And they've been held to under 106 points a game. Now, as far as this season's concerned, uh, the Clippers have been collapsing defensively in the final 12 minutes. These guys give up more fourth quarter points a game than most clubs in the West. Now, injury-wise, Plumlee and Boston are still out for the Clips. Jamal Murray out until December with a hammy uh, for uh, Denver. Uh, three out of Denver's last five ball games did get over the total. Overs against the likes of the Pelicans, Bulls, and Mavericks. Meanwhile, the Clippers saw three out of their last five on the road get over the number themselves. Give me the Nuggets, minus four and a half, over 223. Next matchup, Timberwolves, Warriors, 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Golden State's minus two, totals 221 and a half. And despite being favored by a basket, uh, the Warriors have had their issues over the past week or so. They lost their last three straight. And they've recorded only one win this year in their own building. And a lot of that is due to some poor offensive production. Uh, Golden State's one of the lowest home scoring teams in the league right now. And unfortunately for them, they're playing against the toughest defensive team in the league at the moment. The T-Wolves are limiting their opponents to a league low 103 points a game. And no real surprise here, they're also holding their competition to just 41% shooting from the field. That is also a league low. Anthony Edwards leads the lineup in steals. Uh, he's also averaging over 28 points a game. Meanwhile, Reed, Daniels, and Conley are all knocking down over 42% of their three-pointers. Now, when it comes to the number, the T-Wolves have seen unders recently against the likes of the Jazz, Nuggets, and Heat. Meanwhile, Golden State, 6-5 and five to the under for the entire season. Give me Minnesota plus two, under 221 and a half. 
And with that, folks, we are going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. Grizzlies-Lakers, 10.30 p.m. East. The Lakers are the five-and-a-half point favorite. Totals 223 and a hook. The Lakers are on a two-game winning streak, and uh, they scored a considerable amount of points in those two victories. D'Angelo Russell is averaging over 17 points a game along with seven assists. Meanwhile, Austin Reeves is averaging double-digit points a night himself, and he does a nice job on defense. They're facing a Memphis team who lost all of their ball games this year besides two. When it comes to shooting the basketball, they're nearly the worst in the league. These guys have the second lowest team field goal percentage in the entire NBA. Now, injury-wise, Tillman's questionable. Rose is still out. When it comes to the total, three out of Memphis's last four outings did stay under the number. Meanwhile, the Lakers are 60% to the under for the entire season. Give me the Lakers, minus five and a half, under 223 and a hook. And with that, folks, we are going to jump into our quick pick recap. Give me the Atlanta Hawks minus four over 232. Sixers minus five and a half over 241. Miami Heat minus three over 223 and a half. I'm five and oh with a push on my last six extra daily picks on my premium page. And the good news is I have another extra daily pick going off here today for just $2.99 for 30 days of service. The link is in my bio. Orlando Magic plus three and a half under 219. Thunder minus nine and a half over 237. Mavericks minus three over 239 and a half. Utah Jazz minus six over 231. Nuggets minus four and a half over 223. Timberwolves plus two under 221 and a half. Lakers minus five and a half under 223 and a hook. And with that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium page. Now, if you do end up getting a membership here today on patreon.com slash Brock page, just a friendly reminder, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. That's why I always tell folks, that chairman membership, it's a full access, all-inclusive package. Gives you access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. As an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on the free video. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, folks, happy Tuesday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium page at patreon.com slash Brock page.